Hello everyone and welcome back to the Dancer's Book. My name is Alexander Bonev. Uh, in this video I will be discussing the most common issues with our standard and American smooth frame. We will try to address the problems that are arising among different levels of dancers as well as how to fix them. I will give you a few exercises that will definitely improve work as well as the amount of time that you will be able to maintain quality. Alright my friends, let's begin. So. As you all know, the first and most important thing is to understand what the issues are. Uh, unless you do so, it will be very difficult for you to improve your dancing. So it's pretty much uh, the same as in personal life, I suppose. Let's begin by finding out the most common issues with frame. Stiffness, tiredness, misunderstanding of fixed point and broken sides. Okay, those are the four uh, most common issues when it gets to a frame and overall posture. So, um, in order for us to know how to improve our dancing, we always need to find out what are the issues that we're having per se. So, when we're dancing, we always need to be aware of those four things. Number one, stiffness. So, when you're dancing, and essentially when you project your frame being smooth or standard, Obviously, this Latin and rhythm would apply as well, but when you're dancing smooth and standard, you always want to make sure that the frame as itself is not exactly fixed. Because the stiffer the frame, the more difficult to dance. You always want to make sure that you have certain amount of flexibility. And when I'm referring to a flexibility, it doesn't mean that you need to move your hands up and down, or obviously opening uh, back and forth. You just want to make sure that you allow some sort of flexibility to have a better transition and easier changes throughout. Now, this is in terms of stiffness, so I'm a firm believer that the, st that the stiffness is not really a good friend when it gets to dancing, generally speaking. It's number one. The second thing that you want to make sure you're aware of is the reason why your body starts getting tired and often is again, related to the stiffness that we create, and it's actually start catching to our uh, shoulders, shoulder blades, neck, and so forth. Often we forget that we need to use the back muscles in order for us to essentially relieve this frame of ours. So, stiffness brings us to tiredness. The third thing that we see is a very common issue, and especially with the female dancers, is our broken sides. Now, Typically, when you're dancing smooth or standard, you will often try to project, especially the left side forward. Well, what we end up seeing is essentially that left side being broken, okay? On the other side, we also see the right, the right side of the frame also being dropped, or ultimately, both elbows just collapsing. Well, this is, as I call it, a broken side, one or another sometimes maybe both. This is another thing that it's obviously unacceptable. The last thing that I find as a major issue is dancers often do not understand what a fixed point is, how to use it, and to incorporate in their dancing. With that being said, we cannot constantly move every single part of the body. We cannot dance as a jelly and expect to produce a quality movement. So those are the most common problems and now let's see how we can address them and make them better. So the first thing that I want you to think of is every time when you're getting into a frame with your partner, you need to produce a so-called a positive projection, okay? So when you're moving in synchronized way with your partner, you're not projecting away quite opposite, in fact, you're projecting forward to connect with the person you're moving with. So, what you need to make sure is that everything you do from an upper body standpoint is always towards your partner and it's never away. This is a common misunderstanding because um, what people typically see on the really advanced dancers, you know, like obviously world champions and so forth, is especially from a followers or female standpoint, is a lot of flexibility from the upper back especially, 
Obviously, they will produce a lot of shaping, but it doesn't mean that they disconnect from their partner, meaning there is a constant, a positive projection. Positive is always when you're, you know, looking for connection with your partner. The second thing that you want to make sure you're aware of, especially for the framers itself, is the so-called rolling action. Now, often our hands get tired while we're moving. One of the main reasons for that is because we, we're simply trying to hold them up without necessarily a projection, okay? So the elbows and essentially the hands as itself, you always need to roll from down, around and forward. So do it again. Instead of simply placing your hands forward, what we do is we project out, around and forward. So we always give towards our partner from an upper body standpoint and we always try to create this almost rolling action around, okay? Maybe from a different angle, around. This will significantly decrease the amount of tiredness that you may get into the hands. So maybe from a different angle, instead of just lifting, around, down. This is the projection that you're looking. And as you can see, I hope, I'm going forward, I'm projecting forward and around versus just lifting or versus pulling away to create my shape. Another common reason for dancers to essentially start feeling tiredness in the shoulder uh, area as well as the elbows is because they have not activated their back muscles or specifically the shoulder blades. Now when you're dancing a smooth and standard it is crucial for you to think of uh, maybe a pinching of your shoulder blades if you wish. There are a couple of good things that will happen. First of all the shoulder blades will take a lot of the pressure that will typically go towards your biceps and obviously spread towards the wrist area. That's number one. The second thing is it will in fact open the sternum significantly. So when you're dancing, besides the rolling action that I already mentioned, besides the forward projection, in order for you to help yourself being able to keep that frame for a longer time, you want to make sure that you close the shoulder blades, that you almost pinch them if you wish. Now, while doing so, if you manage to maintain that for some amount of time, you want to make sure that the belly is not essentially going forward because this needs to remain tucked in. While trying to roll the shoulders down and under, you also want to make sure that you, as much as possible, isolate your elbows. So the elbows are that one joint that typically remains isolated. With that being said, we're not rolling just the elbows alone. So what we do is the shoulders, essentially, they roll around and back, or back and around, and the elbows, they actually remain slightly behind. So the elbows are not dropped, okay? It's easy for us to mistake and while thinking that the shoulders need to go down to bring the elbows down, which would be a mistake because the elbows actually remain aligned and slightly behind, okay? When I'm referring to behind, I'm referring to behind the former and typical frame, not so much behind the body, okay? Shoulders, roll down, open, forward projection, elbows, always a separate part that does not roll down. The point for you will be to understand the work of the wrist as well. The wrist is typically the last point that usually develops, not only in frame, but in fact, even if you were doing any kind of styling, being in smooth, rhythm Latin. So what we do is essentially the elbow is always a crucial part, developing certain action towards the end of any sort of movement. With that being said, when you're doing the, all the actions, refer to previous explanation of shoulders rolling down, around and down, obviously projecting forward and everything, you wanna make sure that you understand as much as possible that the wrist, they're actually acting the very same way as your shoulder. So the only thing that acts in a different way, that's your elbow. But the wrist, they actually wrap around and 
down, okay? So they go under and down, and that's the way that we connect. Often when I dance with my students, I'm very picky of how they connect, and that's exactly the reason why, because if we simply do this, we're most likely not exactly prepared for dancing. If we do everything in a proper way, then we can definitely produce a much quality movement. The main job of the elbows is to essentially counterbalance everything else in our frame. So this is the main reason why we in fact isolate them because otherwise we will be moving after our elbows. In fact, what they do is they counterbalance. When something projects forward, elbows counterbalance back instead of bringing us forward. Now, I did mention in the beginning the importance of flexibility versus stiffness. And again, I'm emphasizing that flexibility doesn't mean dancing standards with this frame. What it means is that we have that rolling action. What it means is that we have the activation of the back. The back is able to move if needed. Um, so ultimately, we're not stiff. We're not in fixated point throughout the entire body trying to move, which would be quite incorrect. The next thing that I will try to do is um, I would like to give you a little exercise. An exercise for your frame and for understanding of the um, spine work. So, the spine is usually the fixated point that shouldn't be flowing forward and backwards when moving. What I want you to do is, I want you to get into the proper frame of yours, and if you would like to make it a little more staccato, you can simply think of, if, if you were to have a ball in front of you, one of those bouncy balls in the gyms, essentially you're holding that ball, and the only thing that we truly do is we just squeeze the ball, trying to make our frame a little more uh, staccato, a little more smaller and compact. So what we do from here is we're going to take a forward step. Now, if you were to dance a tango action, you obviously have a CBA and P position. You can always dance just a forward step, almost like an in waltz, and no need for CBA and P. It's really up to you. So, first thing, a little wider frame. I'm going to create a movement forward, and the movement, it truly doesn't matter if it's a staccato, if it's a CBMP or no. So, I'm gonna move forward. From here, I'm gonna go through my split weight position and then I will stop. I can fully arrive on my left foot for this example. And what I'm gonna do is I can move the frame. But one thing that I'm not moving is my fixated point slash my spine. And the reason for that is because it will affect my balance. As you can see, I'm immediately losing my balance. So, I'll do it again. Moving forward, through a split, fully arriving, stopping. From here, frame, frame. I can move back, frame, frame. Now, if you would like to uh, make it a little more difficult, you may move to a slightly more tango idea. Obviously, the first step is going to be a CBMP. And once you fully arrive on that foot, you can try the frame, frame, and then maybe take another step. Frame, frame. A very much so incorrect way of doing that exercise. Moving forward and trying to move everything. Okay, this is where the fixated point of your spine comes in play. It's extremely important to understand the goal of the movement. So, if you're taking a forward step of any dance for that matter, when you're taking the step, you want to make sure that the spine is projecting a certain direction. So, there's always a goal, the spine being done. The actual rotation that happens in our forward step, for example, happens more or less through the back area. 
versus through the front and just affecting the entire um, the entire frame. Now, this exercise, if you have space, if you're not practicing at home, you can easily take three, four, five, six and more steps moving forward as well as moving backwards. Between every full weight change, you can essentially try the rotational action. You can also add some timing for yourself and maybe even playing music. So the exercise would go either simply forward without any rotation, arriving on the foot and trying to add rotation without affecting your fixated point. Either taking a forward step in a CBMP, fully arriving on the foot and then creating movement left to right. It is okay to add some shaping if shaping is needed based on the figure being done. But then you again make sure that the balance prioritize everything else you do so. Our spine should never be part of the rotation that we're trying to do. And an example of a really bad work would be taking a forward step and essentially moving everything as well as upper body and lower part being jiggling. When you're dancing your smooth and standard, there's always one side leading, meaning we don't dance square, we always rotate one side or another. There is a constant promenade or a contra promenade position of yours that you need to be aware of. And that's the next thing that we're going to talk about as well as understanding of your head weight. When you're dancing, your balance is the most important thing. If you're off balance, there will be no single step of yours that will make any sense and you'll always be struggling, catching up that weight flying around instead of being able to produce a decent movement. With that being said, sometimes I've been asked if the size of steps, if what, what, what is the priority? I would get a couple asking me, oh, but how come this other couple is moving more than I do? It's not a competition of who moves more. So with that being said, if you're fighting for balance, that's probably the first thing that you need to address. With that being said, there's block of weights that will always move. And that's exactly what's happening when we're transitioning from one place to another. It's a block of weights that essentially is traveling across the floor. And the top of that block of weights is your head. And your head is probably the most important single thing in your body that you need to be aware of when you're moving. Your head, your head, your head weight is extremely crucially important. Now, a very good thing for you to practice is to learn how to isolate your shoulders, your head and the lower part of your body. Uh, it will help you significantly with everything you do in dancing. So, a relatively simple exercise, slightly open legs. I'll put all my weight on my right foot. If you're mirroring me, obviously the left foot is where your weight will be. Clear awareness of essentially the rolling action that we discuss, as well as tummy and shoulder blades being closed. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start projecting essentially one way or another for my head, as well as shoulders and arms. So, here's where I am. You can see how the right side of mine is going away. My fixated point and head position remaining together. It would have been a mistake if I was to allow my upper body being pulled. If I go on the left foot, remember, you do need to know where your body weight is. If I go on the left foot, I can create left and it's always the head being aware. If my head is tilted, it's already pulling me to the left. If my head is forward, I cannot produce anything moving away. I cannot produce opposition. Once again, going to the right. Once again, going to the left. Another thing that you may have seen a lot, especially in American smooth, for whatever reason, is extremely 
um, famous and is being used all the time from about every dancer on the floor is this. And something else. That's typically being done by a female dancer. It again requires a full understanding of your frame, which although it's open, it's a frame, fixated point, as well as what you're doing with your head. So if you're moving forward, first of all, you need to know where your weight is, in my case, in my right foot. Left foot need to produce, and do you see how my right side is actually contrabalancing the left foot, right, in a CBMP position? I cannot go with both sides. Right foot, left, foot stretch forward, right shoulder, counterbalancing. Now I feel extremely balanced. Constant rolling action from the back, obviously, shoulders as well. And as you can see, even here, the elbows are actually quite isolated from a different angle. So they're not dropped, they're not way behind me, and they're not straightening either. All right, so practice, practice, practice. I hope that you will find this video helpful. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you will find it helpful. Um, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please make sure that you hit the subscribe button. And also there is a icon that essentially has a little bell on it. If you hit the bell, every time we have a video, a new video, you'll be able to see it first. Again, thank you and I will see you in the next video. Bye.